Hello, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing Magic and Mysticism. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody who showed up unexpectedly to uh, my YouTube live streaming last week. Um, I didn't plan that. I wanted to see if I had the technology and wherewithal to pull off a live streaming, and apparently I do, to some limited capacity, at least. Um, so I'm going to be doing it again. Uh, for those of you all who are interested, I'm going to be doing it tomorrow at 5 o'clock Central Standard Time. So let me see if I can get the math right. So that would be, what, um, 6 p.m. for Eastern Time. That would be 3 p.m. for um, Pacific and 4 p.m. for Mountain, if I have that right. So show up if you have... Uh, um, if you're interested and have something um, you want to chat about or just listen to me ramble about various things, feel free. All right, so let's talk about today's topic, which are the jinn. So who and what are the jinn? So the jinn are the spirits that are associated with the um, religion of Islam. So the jinn, as opposed to spirits formerly known as Jennifer. A different type of jinn. Uh, so, when we're talking about the jinn, like I said, they belong um, to the tradition of Islam, even though the jinn themselves, as an, uh, a concept, uh, shows up before the rise of Islam. In fact, if you look at the Testament of Solomon, which I believe is the first century AD that originally the text talked about the jinn and Solomon um, uh, luring the jinn into his uh, brass vessel and they were referred to as jinn later I think through time it got retranslated into demons uh, and that became the goetic uh, kind of mythology but in any case let's talk a little bit more about these particular spirits so let's contrast it with angels. So angels are thought to be created from pure light. The jinn are supposed to be created from smokeless fire. So you might think smokeless fire, that's kind of it's a cool concept, but what exactly is that? Well, some people who have a little bit of knowledge of science thinks that it is our fourth state of matter. So we have um, solid liquid gas and the fourth is plasma. So they think that plasma is uh, the state that these particular spirits are um, are made of. Now, the jinn themselves, they're really not considered angels, and they're not considered demons. They're considered to be kind of a class of their own. So they don't quit. They don't quite fit nicely in any of those particular categories. Um, now, they, as far as where they show up, you'll find the mention the mention in the Quran. You'll find them mentioned in commentaries on the Quran, um, Arabian Nights, and a few other places. Um, nowadays, you find them in uh, pop culture with um, television shows. I want to say Supernatural did something on them, and um, I think some I saw some type of game with the Jinn mentioned. So let's talk about the creation myth and how the Jinn plays into all of that. So the jinn were created by Allah, and this was before man. So they were there with the angels, and they had the same power and status as the angels. So uh, Allah created Adam and asked that the jinn basically be um, subservient and revere Adam, man. And they, uh, they declined, let's say it nicely. And as a result of that, they were cast out of heaven. Now, if this sounds familiar, you'll find the same sort of thing in the Holy Bible in the casting out of the angels, which became the fallen angels, down to earth. So you'll see some similarities there. Now, when they were cast out, a lot of some of the jinn were very upset about that so they went and pleaded with Allah and said that we basically won our day in court so Allah said that on the judgment day they can come they can come before him and plead their case 
try to reconcile themselves bef before Allah and about why um, they are of a higher status than, than man and, and thereby, if they're successful, reconcile themselves with the divine. So, interesting. Um, so, when we're talking about jinn themselves, there's different types. And by the way, the uh, main, the, the head jinn is Iblis. Uh, he is thought to lead, be a, the person who leads the jinn in order to, I guess, lead man more into temptation and to the darkness of creation. Um, by the way, um, when you're studying the jinn, some of it is, is interesting. It's, it's a little bit different. Some people might say bizarre. Uh, some of the, the ideas. Um, the jinn are thought by many to be one of the spiritual beings that are trying to oppress uh, humanity to kind of keep them at a lower level um, to, to try to keep almost like a lo lower vibrational type of um, thing. So um, they are thought to uh, mess with and with humanity, with humans, and be almost like trickster spirits. Uh, when they were cast out, they were given free will to do um, as they please. Now that got me to thinking, okay, what exactly do they mean by free will? Can they do any, anything they want? Or are they subject to a hierarchy where they can do kind of what they want, but within certain constraints? Because even the angels don't have free will. They have to follow um, divine laws and, and different things like that. <laughs> You don't hear anything in the in the text about angels about an angel one day saying, "Fuck it, I quit." You know, I'm tired of this. I have no retirement. Um, I have to keep doing this. You know, no, it doesn't seem like they have free will. So, uh, back to the jinn. The different types. So there was there was iblis that I mentioned. There is also a type of jinn called the Karen or the Karen. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Who are species of jinn where you can actually you can actually develop a relationship with them like a lifelong companion. There's even a ritual to marry uh, these particular jinn, and if you uh, marry them, it, and it's very much a monogamous type of thing, they're supposed to get very jealous and um, that sort of thing. Um, but you can develop a sexual relationship with these spirits. Now, now the jinn, even though they're spirits, apparently they are not immortal. That they have a very long life and they clearly um, outlive you and me. Um, but they they do die and they get married and, and all these types of things. So they kind of have some similarity to humans and certain customs. Uh, now here is where the jinn are formidable spirits is that they're very much like I mentioned the trickster spirits they're shapeshifters they can transition in and out of our dimension very quickly they are very good at that just like we switch channels on our smart TV um, they can do that they can travel really quickly um, they are thought to tempt to aggravate and to have their fun on our plane now, when they are on our plane, they tend to, according to the stories, reside in unclean places. So we're talking about old towns that are dilapidated, uh, broken cities, crumbled, uh, or bathrooms, um, caves, dark spaces, and that's where they like to, to reside. Um, Now, what about their natures? So, um, reminds me a little bit about when you're talking about the Goetic demons. There are ones that are fairly good, toward, a little bit towards the light. There's some that are you just wouldn't meet, want to meet down a dark alley or have them come upon you. Uh, and then there's some in the middle. 
<clears throat> However, um, this partic these particular spirits, as a rule, um, I would tend to kind of to back away from them. Now, there are people who feel comfortable working with them, and there are um, books, not many, that talk about performing magic utilizing the djinn. However, most of those books will talk about binding the djinn first uh, because um, it is f really thought that they are kind of like wild. <laughs> They're wild and you know, most people take more precautions with the djinn than they would even take with um, some of the more classical uh, demons. Because they're shapeshifters, they can take many different forms, and particularly any different forms. Um, they've been known to take the shape of snakes in spirit form, snakes that you look at and you're convinced that there's really a snake, but there's not. Um, dogs, wild dogs. There are some paranormal researchers who believe that some of the spirit phenomena that we see people are report in everyday life like um, the shadow people are actually jinn because they share certain characteristics one is that both can just appear and disappear really quickly um, another is and I forgot to mention this is that the jinn get their energy from our life force from drawing from our life force and attaching themselves to us in a way. They do this by taking frightening shapes. The snakes, the dogs, the shadow people, what happens is we see that, we're not used to it, we get a little scared, adrenaline pumps through our body, and it releases, it releases energy. And they take that energy and they draw upon that energy. So they're very vampiric in that way. They consume the force, in other words. So what happens if you decide, uh, this is pretty scary, <laughs> I want to protect myself from the djinn? Well, before I do that, I did for, fail to mention that we have this romanticized idea of the djinn. Our idea of the genie and Aladdin and all of that, where the genie gives you three wishes and, you know, and, and you'll, you'll get what you asked for and in our fairy tales that is based on the jinn the genie stuff uh, however that's not exactly how it works it's um, kind of a western it probably didn't derive from the western but it's something we've adopted in the west as uh, you know that idea now one of my favorite movies just and it's kind of a campy horror movie if you've ever seen it maybe the 80s and 90s I can't remember what year it was uh, the Wishmaster series, especially the first one was pretty good, it's pretty scary. And that is Jin, and that is Dark Jin, and that is, you get a wish from them, okay fine, you're going to get your wish, but it's going to come out in some type of absurd or extreme way in which you will be extremely punished for even wishing that. That's what, what I kind of see maybe closer to the, to the Jin if you try to um, try to mess with them. If you tried to do that, I, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> um, so the connection between the jinn and the shadow people. Um, some people think that the Mothman was a jinn type of phenomena. Who knows? Um, I know that I have. Uh, I've been reading a book that talks about different spirits that over time who are considered life force suckers who do take the life force from us and it kind of catalogs the different ones and different stories and that's pretty interesting I might have to show you that maybe in another video so back to what I was talking about um, how do you protect yourself from the gen if you suspect that you may be attacked or that you be, may be messed with uh, iron, they supposedly um, don't like iron. So iron jewelry, tend to want to stay away. Uh, prayers have seen, have been shown to work in certain circumstances. Um, I remember reading um, something about, again, 
the jinn are shapeshifters and they're tricksters. That this lady who starts saying the Lord's Prayer and the jinn would, you know, would take off. Um, would no part of that. Probably the calling of the divine and the raising of the vibrational force probably was uncomfortable. So what she did was she put the Lord's Prayer over her bed so that she could make sure that she wasn't uh, accosted when she was in the room or when she was sleeping. Well, that worked for a couple weeks and all of a sudden her, uh, her plaque of the Lord's Prayer suddenly disappeared out of thin air. And that was, she suspects it was the gin. So uh, do what you can. Um, but remember also that you can project your authority. We have spiritual authority. We are spirits. We're spirit embodied in human flesh. And we have, as magicians, we have the right to project our energy and our authority over our sphere of influence in our world on anything. And that's, you can do that with the jinn. Uh, but you can't be just be like, please go away, will you? You know, you have to you'd be very forceful, assertive, and maybe even aggressive. <clears throat> uh, and set that intention that you want them to leave and that you'd have a better chance of, of doing that. Uh, and that's a good advice for any type of negative spirit that could, you can encounter. Um, if you have something more advanced, you'd have to do a little bit more, but sometimes we, there are lower vibrational spirits that kind of come around, cause a little mischief, and I've had that happen in meditation. Once you become a magician, a meditator, and into spiritual things, you become a light that shines real brightly and you'll attract the dark and the light of the spirit world. And when that happens, you have to kind of deal with what comes because what you're essentially what you're doing when you enter that lifestyle is you're opening yourself up to certain situations. Um, just like if you were somebody who had a lot of authority and you were um, a police officer trying to enforce the law, that you would have, you'd run into people who are very respectful of you if you were a policeman and then other people who. Um, would feel more inclined to test you and maybe be aggressive with you. Okay. If you are interested in learning more about the gin, I mentioned somebody's name, Rosemary Ellen uh, Gilly. She has a few books out on the gin and um, she has probably done more research on them um, in modern day times than anyone. So um, check her out. Uh, there are also a couple books on gin magic. Uh, it, you can probably find those on Amazon. There aren't many. Um, just be very careful. And that's about it. Again, please subscribe and like. I'll put some uh, links in the description in case you're interested in um, connecting with me on Patreon and various other things. So I will see you another time and look forward to seeing some of you tomorrow, five central standard time for my YouTube streaming. Take care.